And today we're going to be talking all things LinkedIn and CV. So the agenda, I'll do a quick introduction about myself, then we'll move on to profile optimization for job seekers and how to set your profile up for success. Then there'll be advice and tips with regards to CVs. I'll give you some information on what to do next, and then there'll be a chance for questions at the end, like Alex said. So a little bit about me. So my background is predominantly in sales. I've worked in sales for 20 plus years, 10 of those years being within the insurance sector. I started off on the phone doing telesales and progressed up to sales management level before deciding I wanted to try something new. And then I moved into recruitment six years ago. Thoroughly enjoyed it, learned a lot and progressed up to director level within that as well. So I decided in 2019 to set up on my own, focusing on recruitment and career coaching. But after a couple of discussions I had at the beginning of this year, I decided that with, with job seekers who were looking to get back into work, I decided from that point, I wanted to make the main focus career coaching and make it my mission to help as many job seekers as possible get back into work. And that's been my mission for the whole year. So if you've been, if you're connecting with me on LinkedIn, or if you've seen my stuff on LinkedIn, you'd see that my main focus has been that for the last 12 months. And it's what's led me to be here today. So I want to continue that journey and I want to help as many of you um, get closer to your next opportunity as well. So some of the stuff that we'll discuss today will hopefully help you on that journey. The first thing we're going to talk about is LinkedIn and how to set your profile up and get noticed by hiring managers and recruiters. So the first thing, oh, you might want to take notes as well on this, by the way. So the first thing I want to discuss is the headshot. So what you have to remember is your next employer could be looking at your profile. So it's best to see it professional at all times. So don't be afraid to show a little bit of your personality. Make sure that it's a current photo and it's a high quality photo if possible and make sure it is on a clear background if possible. Key thing, make sure it's just you in the photo, not a photo of you at your wedding or out with friends at the weekend or with family. Remember, this is your job search journey. This is about you and your story. So it's just you in the headshot. Next thing which can have a massive impact on your profile straight away, I would highly recommend everyone to do this is to put a banner on your profile. You can see the difference on the left hand side there. That's one that I've had done for me. And you can see the, well, that's the old LinkedIn banner. They have changed it slightly, but it's still best to get one done if possible. Because this is your shop window. This is your chance to stand up and get noticed by recruiters and hiring managers. And what you want to do is, if you think about it, recruiters and hiring managers are clicking through hundreds of different profiles every single day. And you want something that when they click on your profile, it's going to stop them in the tracks and entice them in that little bit more to look at your profile in more detail. And there's a way that you can do that, and it's quite similar to the way I've done mine. Um, as you can see on my banner, it shows you exactly what it can do. Three different areas that I specialise in, and it's got a call to action on there as well. So you can do that if you're looking for your next option. You could have your job title, three ways on how you can help your next employer, or three of your key skills and then a call to action as well. The call to action is very important. And for a call to action, you can have either email address, mobile number, or if you don't want to have those on there, you can um, just have tell people to message you directly. The really good thing about banners is you can get, obviously you can get them done professionally, or you can do them for free on, there's a few different websites online where you can do them, one of them being Canva, canva.com. But actually I've got, I had mine done for me. And if, well, I can recommend someone to you for that if you want one done, if you get in touch with me at the end, who is also helping people who are looking for their next opportunities and offering discounts as well for people, people are looking for their next role. So it's definitely worth reaching out if you are thinking about having one done. But as I said, you can do them for free online. Call to action, I've touched on this just now um, but this is an easy way to let people know how you want to be contacted they can see it straight away as soon as you click on your profile it's in your banner it's just a nice easy way to let people know how you want to be contacted and the best way to do it so as i said it needs to be email mobile number or you can tell people to contact you direct on linkedin 
there's three different places where I would want you to put this in your profile and it's the banner. So have it on your banner. Make sure it's in the about section at the end and then in your most recent role on the experience section. But we'll touch on those in a bit shortly. The next thing on LinkedIn, I think this is probably the most important part of LinkedIn and with regards to being uh, for job search and things like that. Um, what will happen? Recruiters and hiring managers, when they're searching for the, for their um, for candidates, they will get information from the job specifications. So they'll get job titles, keywords from the job spec, and they'll even try different sectors as well. And they'll take that into the search bar at the top of LinkedIn. And depending on what they put in there and what you've got in your profile will determine whether you show up in their search results. So what we want is for you to show up in as many search results as possible. That's a key thing. We want as many people as possible looking at your profile. And there's different ways that you can do that. And one thing I will say here is you do see a lot of people who are looking for the next role who've got immediately available, open to new opportunities, seek a next role. You don't need to put that in there. It's taken up space where you could put keywords, key phrases that will help you come up in more search results. Because as I said, recruiters and hiring managers will get the information from the job description. So if you look at the bottom, um, there's an example there. So I've based it on a salesperson. So their current role might be a sales manager, but in that role, they might have been managing key accounts and they would have been doing business development as well. So I've put three, two other things that's relatable to sales. So you've got sales manager, account manager, business development and because I've spaced it out like that they're all individual search terms so if a recruitment consultant types in any of those three things you're going to show up in their search results the next thing is sector so you may be working in the construction industry but you might also have the transferable skills to work in industrial and that might be a sector that you're also passionate about as well and you want to work in again put construction and industrial so if a recruitment consultant types in either of those words again you're going to show up in their search results. Now, one thing I like to do, which really helps and makes a massive impact, I think, is straight away, somebody clicks on your profile, the banner hits them in the face, they can see three of your key skills, the role that you're looking for, then they look at your headline, see the different sectors that you're interested in, the different areas that you've worked in, but you've also got one sentence at the end of that headline highlighting the key thing, how you can help your next employer. So you can see on that, but helping businesses gain more clients and generate more sales. Oh. Which works really well. And it's definitely, I would highly recommend doing that with regards to. Pardon, sorry, did I miss something there? No, I think it's fine. I think someone's unmuted. Yeah, sorry. Right. <laughs> no worries. So next section is the about section um, you can use some of the information from your cv for this so you've got um, the personal summary which you could use and the key skills section from your cv as well but what you have to remember the key thing is this is about you this is your job search you need to give in this section a, a brief overview of yourself what do you do who do you help and how do you do that remember to highlight key skills and experience within this section because I'll say the key skills that you're highlighting in here again could be on the job description and what they use in the search bar to search for you again you're going to show up in more search results so that's the key thing we're trying to get as much traffic as possible to your profile another good thing here is to add your biggest career achievements to date so your the, the, the biggest things that you've done throughout your career and try and use facts and figures where possible because people like to see results the other thing is you can show a little bit more of your personality here because as I say, you can keep it um, business focused on what you do, what you've done for in the past in the first part of the about section. But it's nice to let people in that little bit more, let them get to know you that little more, bit more by adding a little bit at the end of the about section of what you like to do outside of work. What are your hobbies? So you might see on mine, I have changed it recently, um, but I normally have, I enjoy going fishing at the weekends, winding down and spending time with my three daughters so something like that it just lets people get to know that a little bit more get to know you get to trust you and it helps further down the line when we continue the process into engaging with people and connecting with people and networking as well again make sure you've got the call to action at the end of the about section so mobile number email address 
or tell people to contact you direct on LinkedIn. The next section is the experience section. So the key thing here is consistency and make sure that this is in line with everything that you've got on your CV. My advice on this would be to put as much detail as possible for the last three roles. And again, you can use the key responsibilities and achievements from your CV. Again, use keywords which may be on potential future job descriptions that you're going for. Anything before three roles um, or before that's beyond 10 years of your recent experience, you can just list unless you feel that it's relevant to the roles that you're going to be going for. Throughout your LinkedIn profile at all times, remember to focus on the positives, show your exp experience and knowledge where you can and add value where possible. The next section on LinkedIn, which is really good, is the featured section. So the featured section is directly under the headline, and this is an opportunity to really showcase your some of your best work. So if you've been um, posting content on LinkedIn and you've had really good engagement on that or something that you're really positive about and proud of, you can highlight your, some of your content in there for when recruiters and hiring managers are looking for your profile, they can see some of the work that you've been putting out there. Any articles that you've done on LinkedIn, um, that you are really pleased about. Again, you can showcase that there. Or other material that you've done outside of work, you'd have to check obviously with confidentiality and things like that with the businesses that you've worked for, if it's presentations that you've done through them. But again, this is another opportunity to really showcase any work that you've done in the past. The other thing, which I will say, and I'll say I mentioned this in all of my programs, and this would lead on to other things, but that is for another session with regards to networking and things like that. But Remember at all times to think about your target audience. Who do you want to be looking at your profile? Who could be your potential next employer? Because that's who we need to focus all of this stuff on. So content, the stuff that you have in your profile, the people that you're networking with, the people that you're connecting with. Always think about your target audience at all times. The next thing is recommendations. So these are really good in two ways. If you haven't got any recommendations, I highly recommend reaching out to some people to get some. You can get recommendations from ex-managers, ex-colleagues that you've worked with, ex-customers even, ex-mentors, coaches that you've been working with as well. And you can also give recommendations to them. And what you will find is if you give a recommendation, people will normally return the favor and give a recommendation back. But the reason they're good is they will enhance your profile straight away. Recruiters and hiring managers like to see success stories and stuff like that. They can see what people think it's like to work with you, what it's like to work with you. So when they're looking through your profile, they'll have a look at this section, see what you've done in the past, the successes that you've had, and what people think it's like to work with you. But also, it's a really good and it's a nice, easy way to network and find potential opportunities because you've asked for that recommendation you can follow that up. Once they've done that recommendation for you, you can follow that up with a thank you message and track, check in with that person. When was the last time that you had a discussion with them? So much might have changed since you had that last um, discussion. They might know of opportunities coming up. They might be able to refer you to someone or they might recommend somebody to reach out to. So it's really good in that way. But it's also a nice, easy way to start networking and get you used to that because that is a massive part of looking for you if you're looking for your next role networking is one of the biggest things it's the key to tap into the hidden jobs market and this is just a nice easy way to get used to it ready for when you're reaching out to people that you've not had discussions with before so if you haven't got any recommendations i highly recommend getting some so the other sections on linkedin um endorsements and skills make sure they're in line with the experience that you've got or transferable skills that you could potentially use within future opportunities Interests, again, make sure you're following people of interest, make sure you're following companies of interest as well, because what you will find is um, companies will post if they're hiring, so they'll put the adverts out on their company page. If you're following that page, you'll see that pop up in your news feed. So it's a good way to see opportunities that could come up. Another little tip here, if they are companies of interest, and if you are looking for your next opportunity, put together a hot list of companies. So a, a list of 50 companies that you'd be interested in working for. 
make a list of that of those companies and start connecting with people from those companies and what will happen is you start connecting with these people once you start posting content once you and you're getting these people to look at your profile it just helps further down the line when you're networking so i highly recommend start reaching out and connecting with people from the companies of interest the other good thing is depending on what level of linkedin you've got if you've got linkedin premium there's another section where you can check to see who's been looking at your profile and what i was always say is if someone if somebody's been looking at your profile there's normally a reason so and you will also find if they have been looking at your profile and then you attempt to connect with that person they'll normally say yes but it's good to just follow that up with a message um check in with them and start and network with them but also again think about your target audience is it somebody that could potentially help you with your job search could it be a potential future employer is it one of the companies that was on your um hot list so really think about that as well and then the next thing the other section on linkedin is search appearances so you can check this weekly and there's a section on LinkedIn where you can click and see how many time, times you showed up in people's search results. We can also see the job titles of the people that were searching for you, the sectors that they worked in, and the key thing here is you can see the keywords that you were found for. And that is a good indication to see if you're being found for the right keywords. And if you're not, that's, it's always worth updating your LinkedIn profile to suit. But if you make the changes that I've said already throughout with your headline in the about section, then you should be found for the right keywords. But it's interesting, and I say, if you do make these changes, you will see a different an impact. If you make those changes to your headline and banner, you'll see a massive improvement straight away. So if you're currently outside of work and you're not working, you're looking for your next opportunity, I would highly recommend adding this to your profile. And this is another reason why I said you don't need to put immediately available open to next new opportunities seeking new role because it's just taking up space that you could use to put really good keywords line and as soon as somebody clicks on your profile anyway there's a big box if you've got this um set up if this if you've got this on your profile there's a box that'll hide the, the roles that you're looking for anyway so people can see that you're open to work and you've got the banner you can also do this so only recruiters can see it or you can do it so everyone can see it and the section that this is under is add profile then you click intro click open to opportunities and then you pick the relevant job titles you want to be um, found for and the locations that you want to work in as well so i said that was the first part of so that's all about linkedin and setting your profile up for success if you do those key things even if you just do the banner in the headline for the day and just see what the re results come from that in a week's time you'll see the difference but if you do that you'll see that the keywords change on your profile um, when you're looking at under the search appearance and things like that you should start seeing results straight away and that's what the key thing is we want as much as many people looking at your profile but it needs to be the right people so if you've got the right keywords in your profile you've got the right um, detail in your about section then you'll get who could potentially be your next employer looking at your profile so it's definitely worth doing what i will say now as well i mean i know I was, that was running through things a little bit uh quickly there but what i'll do at the end of this for anybody who is on this webinar if i'll leave my email address at the end if you drop me an email address i'll send you a linkedin profile optimization document which is like a tick box to the things that we've discussed but it'll also give you a few tips and things on what you should be doing on a daily basis so You've got this profile looking really good where you want it to be. The steps that you need to take now to follow a process. And that's when you start connecting with people, start engaging with people and building relationships. And then that leads on to networking, which is why I said start getting recommendations because it will really help with that. Quick tip to get you started straight away. Um, what I tell people on my program, if you are seeking your next role, start connecting with 20 to 25 people every single day start engaging for at least 30 minutes to an hour every single day and start building those relationships because what you will find is once you start posting content if you've been engaging building relationships with them they'll start engaging back with you and it's just going to help when you start posting in things out there you're just going to get a lot more reach so the next thing that we're going to talk about is cvs so a few um, tips and some advice on cvs that'll get you started again what i'll do is anybody who's on the webinar 
I will send some templates out to you. So I'll leave my email address again at the end for that. So you can reach out and I'll send some CV templates as well. So what to include on your CV? So this is the different sections and this is the order that I would put them in. So you've got contact details. You need a link to your LinkedIn profile. So that's normally the step that they'll take from your CV. They'll go and have a look at your profile. Make sure you've got those bits done that I said before. So your banner, headline and things like that. Professional summary. Key skills, key career achievements, career experience, education, languages, if you feel that they're relevant to the role, and then hobbies and interests. Hobbies and interests are optional. And I will say, if you think that they're relevant to the opportunity that you're going for, then you can put them on there. Otherwise, you can use that space to um, enhance the other sections of the CV. For contact details. So what you need on contact details is your name and your current job title. Um, location, you do not need to put the full address. It's just taking up space that's in, it, it's information that's not needed on there. So all you need is your town and the county. Contact number, email address. And what I would say was email address, if you think, I mean, again, your potential next employer could be looking at so stay professional where you can with the email address. And if you haven't got an email address that you, that you think might not be professional, it's always worth setting one up and just having that email address for your job searcher only. So you can keep everything under one thing. It's on your CV and all the jobs, um, applications and stuff like that that you make will be done through that email. So it's e easier to keep track. And then the LinkedIn URL. So have a link to your LinkedIn profile on your CV. The other thing I will say here is, well, it, depending on the level of seniority, you would also have a headline. But as I say, that information and stuff like that will be on the templates that I send you. Professional summary. So this is the, the first paragraph at the top of your CV. And the thing I would say here is keep it short, concise. One paragraph, so five to six lines only, but make sure it's tailored to the role that you're going for. And I've seen a lot of things on, um, I mean, there's so much advice out there, but I think with every single role that you apply to, it should be tailored, your CV should be tailored for that. I mean, I know it's a little bit of extra work, but if you're just sending the same CV for every single position, if you do it this way that I'm telling you, you will see better results. So make sure that it's tailored to the opportunity that you're going for, highlight in there who you are, what you're looking for, and what you can bring to your next employer. Again, use keywords, and the reason for that is with regards to ATS, which um, we will just touch on in a bit more detail shortly. And the key thing again, like we said, with the LinkedIn profile is again, how it your skills, knowledge and expertise here. The next section is key skills, so you can bullet point these um, and I say th these are good as well with regards to ATS because the ATS will pick out keywords and if you've got this information on there, it'll really help with your application. So I would say highlight 12 key skills and make sure six to eight of them are tailored to the role that you're going for. So you can get that information from the job description, see what sort of person, what sort of background that they're looking for and tailor your CV to suit as long as it's experience that you've got and experience that you've had from the past. Or transferable skills as well. You can use bullet points and make sure. So these two sections, the key skills section and what I like people to do is key achievement section as well. So key skills and key achievements, make sure they're on the front page of your CV. And the reason for that, recruiters and hiring managers will just skim a CV to look for information as quickly as possible. And you've got to think some applications, some rules that are out there are getting 250 plus applications. So they will just quickly skim a CV. So if you've got that on your front page, the key skills are really punchy, opening, um, professional summary, and then your biggest key career achievements on the front. It just really helps your CV stand out and get noticed straight away. So they're not having to skim through all the different responsibilities and things that are trying to find information that they need. So what I would say is highlight five or six of your biggest career achievements to date here and focus on figures and results. So what did you achieve? How did you achieve it? How did it help the business? Did, how did it increase if you increased percentages? What was the percentage? Things like that. Or if, if there was monetary results, what were the figures? 
Remember to show your value again at all times, and it's really important to have this on the front page of your CV. So key skills, key achievements, front page. The next section is career history section. So you would have dates, company name, and the role that you're in. And so your CV is not, because you do see some CVs and it's just bullet points all the way through. And I say we need it so it's easy to read. Um, people can, the recruiters and hiring managers can quickly scan and get the information that they need. So I'll do, just do a quick outline of what the company did and what your role was within that company. And then underneath that, that's when you have key responsibilities. But when I say the key responsibilities, make sure you focus just on the key responsibilities. The key responsibilities should be tailored towards the role that you're going for. So have a look what they're looking for in that position and try and relate to what you've done in the past on your key responsibilities section. Then again, some of your key achievements during that um, period, as long as it's not in the key careers section at, sorry, key achievement section at the beginning of the CV. On CV, I would put your last 10 to 15 years career history on there and use the information that we've said, so the key responsibilities, achievements and outline. Anything before that, you can just list with date, company name and role, unless you feel that it's relevant and it will help you in the role that you're going for. So education and qualifications. So education, you just need to list your qualifications. Yes, I put an example there, sports science degree. You don't need to put the school. You don't need to put the date that you got it. Just put the information, the qualification that you got. Other sections, um, as we've mentioned before, languages. If you feel that they're specific to the opportunity that you're going for, then you can put them on there. Hobbies and interests. Again, if you feel that they're relevant to the position that you're going for, or if you haven't got that much career history and you think that will enhance your CV by putting that information on there and bulk it up a bit, then by all means you can do that. But I say it's optional. And if you feel that it's not relevant and you want to enhance the other sections and put more information in there, this gives you the opportunity to do so. References again are optional. So formatting, um, I think it depends. I mean, if you're looking for an interim position, you could just have a CV that's one page and then have it in your key skills and the projects that you've been working on. But with regards to a full chronological CV, then ideally two to three pages. People say it should be two, but I, two to three pages, I would say is absolutely fine. Headings, um, put headings in bold and make sure it's font size 12 or 14 and then any other text is font size 10 or 11. Um, font type, I will always use Calibri, um, but you can also use Arial. And remember to take advantage of white space and make sure you've got spacing and things like that because the CV needs to be easy to read. So do's and don'ts. So the first thing is make sure that your CV is ATS friendly. And I don't want anybody to be afraid of that word because as I say, ATS friendly just means that you haven't got photos, you haven't got graphs, text boxes and things like that. But as I say, the templates that I send out to you, will go through that in a little bit more detail. Make sure that you customize your CV so it's specific to each role that you go for. That's very, very important and use key words, key skills, key buzzwords and job titles throughout. The other thing is attention to details. So make sure you check through for spelling mistakes and things like that. So proofread it, get it, someone else to proofread it as well. So don't. So as I said, photo, you don't need that on there. You don't need personal information. So full address, date of birth, marital status, etc. does not need to be on there as well. Graphics, text boxes, tables, columns, colors, Symbols, are icons, um, italics or underlying bullet points is OK, um, but any other symbols and icons you don't really need. Italics and underlining you don't need and you don't need to put any text in the headers and footers and you don't need to put the word. Well, you don't need to write CV at the top of your CV because people will know what the document is. What I will say, though, if you are in a very if you are going for a creative position, then you might want to have a separate CV where you would be allowed to have some of that information. It depends on the company in the role that you're going for. But if it's a generic CV, you do not need any of that information on that, any of that um, stuff that we've put in there included. Yes, 
Yes, so key thing with CV is you want to try and stand out and get noticed. Um, and I say there's a lot of generic, you can get a lot of information on, online and using self motivated target driven, things like that. But you need to try and think outside the box with the words that you're using. So again, achieve, what did you achieve? How did you achieve it? Things like that. So those are some key words that you could use throughout your CV to help you get noticed. Again, some of this information will be on the templates that I'll send you as well. So I'll just give you a couple of seconds to write some of them down. Get a drink as well. So, some additional tips. So remember, throughout your CV, recruiters and hiring managers like to see results. So focus on results throughout your CV. And it doesn't need to be monetary or things like that. You can just, any processes that you've even put in place that really help the business. What process was it? How did it help that business? That is an achievement. Be honest at all times throughout your LinkedIn profile and your CV. Don't tell any lies on it at all. Make sure, just stay, be honest, stay professional at all times. Use the storytelling framework, like I said, make sure, tell your, this is your job search journey, so tell your story. How can you help your next employee? That's what you need to get across in that CV. That's why you're telling what you can do, what you can bring to that company. How can you help that business? What have you learned from previous roles that you've been in that could help that business? So that's what you need to start thinking about when you're putting your CV and stuff like that together. Again, proofread it, have a read through it yourself. Does it sound like that? Does it sound like you've written it or does it sound like a robot? Make sure it sounds like you. This is again, this is your story, but get somebody else to check it as well and get feedback. It's always good to get um, feedback from someone else and get a second pair of eyes over it. And one thing you should definitely do because things are changing all of the time. You're doing things, you'll be doing different courses, you'll be learning different things, you'll be um, doing different things at work. So your CV should be updated regularly. So keep on top of it. Anything that you've done potentially you could add to your CV. So it's always worth checking and reviewing it, and revising it and updating it. And again, if you need any help on that, if you want a CV review, anybody who's on this webinar, I'm more than happy to do a quick CV review with you and give you some feedback on that if it will help in your job search journey. But yeah, that's the key thing. So I know it's been very quick, um, but as I say, I'll send some information to anyone who needs it with regards to CVs. I'll send the LinkedIn profile document out as well, which will really help your profile. So connect with me on LinkedIn. And these are my, that's my email address and contact number if you need me. But that's what we want. I mean, you want a CV that's going to help you get noticed, and especially your LinkedIn profile. There's that much competition out there. You need to do something that's going to help you stand out and get noticed. And if you just do those little changes that I've said, even if it's just your banner and your headline, it's going to help you get noticed and you're going to, First of all, you're going to be showing up in more search results, so that's going to help straight away. Somebody's going to click on your, for, uh, on your profile, they're going to see your banner, and that's going to entice them in a little bit further to read more about your profile, so that's going to be a massive improvement. But those little things, especially the, 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 the other little tips I said, make sure you, you're building your audience. Start connecting, start growing your network, and start building relationships, because that could be the gateway to your next opportunity. And that's what we're trying to do. We don't want you just doing all the work. We want people coming to you with opportunities as well. And if you do these little things that I've said, it will help massively and you will see better results. So any questions? Alex, have you got any questions for me?